Hello, fine citizens of the internet. This is Grant Shipley, your friendly OpenShift team member. And we've had some pretty great announcements over the last couple days. The first one is that the OpenShift Container Platform version 3.4 has been released, as well as OpenShift Origin 1.4 has been tagged and is ready for everyone to try it out. Now, we have a lot of different ways for you to try it out. OC cluster up, the all-in-one image, um, the CDK, lots of different things, but I had some time today and I uh, thought that it would be cool to just show everyone from start to finish how to actually install OpenShift Origin on a uh, from start to finish, even starting to install the OS. So this video might get a little long. You probably want to fast forward through some of it, but I am just going to start and look at this kids. I'm going to be using VMware today. I'm not even using uh, virtual box and guess what else I'm using I'm using the Windows operating system look at that pretty fancy stuff today so I'm gonna start by clicking on new vo virtual machine and I'm doing this in real time and so I may you know futz around a little bit while I'm trying to uh, figure this stuff out so I'm gonna do custom advanced uh, workstation 12 uh, installer disk uh, I'm going to go to my, uh, let's just browse, oops, look at that, see what I mean, futzing around, VMware, love ya, uh, hit escape and it, uh, destroyed everything, so I'm just gonna browse to my desktop here, and I have a CentOS 7 minimal install that I just downloaded, uh, it's like 400 megs, something like that, I'm gonna click on next, just gonna call this uh, OpenShift Origin 1.4. Now in this video, I'm gonna set this up with DNS and everything, so we should be able to hit it uh, with a web browser at the end of this uh, demo here. All right, so let's click on next number of processors. Let's give this sucker two processors and two cores. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna give this thing 32 gigs of RAM. Now my machine actually has 64 because I am fancy like that. Um, and that's just the way I roll. So I'm gonna give this 32 gigs of RAM. Ooh, come on VMware, you can do it. All right, and I'm gonna use bridge networking because I want this thing to get an actual IP address on my local network. Select IO controller types. No idea what that is. I'm just gonna go with the recommendation here. SCSI, sounds good. All right, create a new virtual disk. Sure, let's create a new virtual disk. Let's give this thing 80 gigs. Uh, allocate disk space now. Uh, let's see, splitting disk makes it easier to move but may reduce performance. Nope, I want a single, single disk. And uh, let's throw this on my uh, big fat drive here, my E drive if I can find it. And uh, we'll just call this OpenShift Origin, save that, click on next. Uh, I don't think we need to customize the hardware. Let's just click on finish there. So uh, I am running this on a fairly recent uh, build here that I got. I am using the um, Intel Core i7 6700K. I got 64 gigs of RAM on this box. I have two SSDs and then I have a uh, larger uh, hybrid drive, SSD uh, hybrid that's two terabytes and that's where I'm storing the virtual machine and I did set it to 80 gig um, just cause you know I have two terabytes worth of space so why not. So VMware is allocating this entire disk right now. Um, I may cut this part out for you just a little bit um, to save you from skipping, uh, having to skip all the way forward. I thought the disk would be created much faster, but oh well, such is life. All right, I'm back. I did pause it because good gracious, this thing took forever. Literally like 10 minutes. Okay, so it's done now. So VMware, what are you doing VMware? You're uh, starting it. Okay, so let's uh, let's go to install CentOS 7 here. And uh, press the enter key to begin the installation process. All right, I can do that. I 
think I can do that. Let's uh, make this a little bit bigger here. All right, something's going on. There we go. Okay. Man. Why are you keep messing with my terminal VMware? Just leave it the same size. All right, so this is booting up the uh, famous CentOS installer, Anaconda. We should get a nice graphical user interface. Look at that. Fancy. I speak English, and I speak United States English. So I'm going to click Continue there. <clears throat> and let's see. Date and time. Keyboard installation source all this is popping in now installation destination that's using that 80 gig volume looks good let me go to network and host name now this is one of my pet peeves here is the network's not on by default so i'm gonna click that make sure it's on look at that speed uh one gigabit whoo yes and i do have gigabit internet Here's the IP address, uh, 0 0.93, localhost.local domain, all good. Let's just go ahead and begin this installation. Let's set us a, uh, a root password here. Ooh, that's weak. That's okay. Let's just click done and click done again. Let's create a user account, Grant Shipley. And look at that. G Shipley by default. Fancy give myself a password make myself an admin click on done and done again all right so this thing's installing it's uh it's uh, it's like 200 packages out of 300 so we're gonna let this finish now this is the centos minimal uh distribution right so it doesn't have x it doesn't have um any extra packages that i don't care about because i just want to run a container platform for my own personal use and uh, I want to run origin so I don't need all this other stuff that gets installed um, I just want to run docker based containers and let OpenShift manage them via Kubernetes so look the install is done it's performing the post installation setup tasks so we'll let that finish and uh, what's nice uh, about uh, the open VM tools is that once this thing reboots I should have a um, a pretty nice uh, interface at that point uh, but I'm probably just going to open up my terminal and, and SSH into it instead of talking to it via the uh, VMware uh, console here so let's uh, still finishing these post installation tasks so let's give it just a minute to finish up here. All right, it's installing the Google. Oh, a bunch of stuff happened there uh, that went by too fast. It's uh, generating the net RAM file system. All right. So let's uh, hopefully this finishes here pretty quickly. And so after this installs, I'm going to walk through step by step on what I do. So that's installs done. So let me reboot this mug here. And we should have a minimal OS installed. Let's, uh, let me make this bigger here again. So it should be coming up. Come on, VMware, you can do it. There we go. Ooh the familiar start bars at the bottom starting wait for Plymouth blue okay so here we go we got a CentOS box so let's log into this thing root and there we go I'm logged in let's check my IP address and it is 192.168.0.93 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't like using the VMware console, so I'm just going to open up my Windows terminal prompt here, and I'm going to SSH into it, root at 192.168.0. And of course, I already forgot what it was. It is, I can look through the transparency here, 93. Okay. And I'm going to authenticate with the root password. Here I am, uptime. Look at that, less than one minute. Okay. So, bare minimal uh, CentOS install. I'm going to start mucking around with stuff. The first thing I'm going to do is yum install 
and I'm going to install the EPOL release here. Get my new uh, repo in there. And the dash Y, if you're not familiar with yum, just doesn't, it's going to um, go ahead and do it without prompting me if I want to. Okay, so now we want to install a few other packages. Docker. Sounds good. We want to use the version that ships with CentOS. Wget. Uh, we probably need get, and we also want Ansible because we're going to be using the Ansible-based installer. And it's going to pull all of these packages down. Just checking for the fastest mirror. Look at that. There it goes. It's off and downloading. 69 packages. Pretty fancy. Pretty fast. It's installing them all. Pearl. Do you see that? I don't want Pearl. Who uses Pearl? Nobody uses Pearl. Just kidding. Sorry, all you Pearl guys. All right, so this will give us Docker, Wget, Git, and Ansible. And we're just going to check our uh, Docker version. So let's do Docker dash version. Oops. Let's dash dash version. Okay, I'm running uh, 1.10.3. All right, perfect. Now, I need to install a couple of other libraries here. And let me make this font just a touch bigger for you here. And I'll clear the screen. Oops. Yum install dash y. And I'm going to install python dash cryptography. If I can spell cryptography right. And then I'm also going to install pi open ssl.x86 underscore 64. And hopefully I typed all that in right. Okay, so now I have those encryption libraries. The first thing we want to do is actually get the Ansible installer. And so we have git, so I'm just going to git clone https github github.com slash openshift slash openshift dash ansible hit enter there so now I have the ansible installer and now I clone my own repo here uh, git clone https github.com slash gshipley install sent os dot git and I'll explain what this pulls down okay so I have, I clone two repos, the Ansible installer as well as my personal install CentOS. If we look in the install CentOS, the only thing this is is my inventory file. This is what Ansible uses to determine uh, what to install. So let's just take a look at my inventory file. Um, my Ansible uh, SSH user is root. My deployment type is origin. I want to do the open shift origin release and I want to do the brand new 1.4 release with the image tag of 1.4.0 my public host name I'm going to set to console.techdope.io and my uh, subdomain for my deployments is going to be apps.console.techdope.io and I am not going to deploy metrics okay and so there's my masters that's literally all that's in here so I'm going to have uh, one master and, and or sorry one virtual machine that's going to have the master and the nodes or the Kubernetes master and minions. Okay, so that's all we need to do there. The next thing I need to do because Ansible is going to try to SSH uh, to the master um, in case I wasn't doing this on the same box. I hope that makes sense. But since that uh, console.techdope.io can't resolve yet I'm just gonna edit my Etsy host file and I am going to add 127.0.0.1 and call this console.techdope.io so now if we ping console.techdope.io we should get some responses okay that's good the next thing I want to do is generate a SSH key so let me clear my screen again here I'm just gonna type in SSH, if I can uh, type today, key gen dash TRSA. I'm just going to save it in the normal spot with no passwords. 
Now I want to copy this ID, SSH, copy ID, root at console.techdope.io. Yep. Okay, so all that this is going to do is copy that public key um, so that I can SSH into this machine from this machine without requiring a password. So let me show you what I mean. If I SSH root at console.techdope.io, it logs me right in. So Ansible needs that because if you are running this install from your local machine but you actually wanted to install on a CentOS box that's perhaps in Amazon EC2 or Google Compute, um, you just need to be able to SSH into that machine. Okay, believe it or not, that's all we need to do. We can run the installer now. So I'm going to go back to my home directory and let's run the installer. Installer. To do that, I'm just going to say Ansible playbook, pass in my inventory file, which I cloned from my git repo that I showed you. And then I want to run um, the OpenShift Ansible playbooks byo config.yaml and this is going to install let me hit enter here and if we have any errors we'll work through them together so let's get this kicked off and it's starting to do a lot of stuff um, but this is going to install the openshift origin 1.4.0 tag if you wanted to install a specific version just change that inventory file um, that we talked about and I would suggest just cloning mine and using that as a base to create your own and now the Ansible installer uh, the playbook is going off and it's configuring this uh, base minimal installation and then after this finishes assuming we don't get any errors and if we do we'll work through them together here uh, we'll then set up DNS so that this will actually uh, be publicly addressable on the internet and we will create a user so that we can actually log into the system so I am um, not going to pause this I'm just going to uh, leave this running so you can actually see how long this actually takes uh, from start to finish in real time it's creating some SSL certs and things are going really quickly I'm pretty impressed with this installer and uh, congratulations to the entire uh, community for getting this Ansible playbook created. I use it uh, quite frequently and it works pretty well. I think we're getting pretty close to uh, being done here. It's getting ready to start up the master. It's loading some templates in. And it is doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Open V switch. Nice. And it's adding the NFS storage plugin dependencies. If you want to do some persistent volumes, cluster FS, look at that. This thing's going to be awesome when it gets done. I'm going to have NFS, I'm going to have cluster. Seth, are you kidding me? Heck yeah, we're, we're getting it all here. Love it.
All right, it's uh, starting up the node here. We got the master done. Getting the node. Now keep in mind, both of those are going to be running on this same virtual machine with the 32 gigs of RAM that I allocated to it. Looks like it's uh, just cleaning things up here at the end. Copy and client binaries out of CLI to the host. That's good. That'll give us those C tools um, right on the start as well as the artifact of this install. Now after this, what we're going to do is add an account, and then we're going to set up DNS. And I'll show you how I set up my zone file and all of that stuff so that DNS actually works. All right, look at that. It's done. No errors. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So, uh, what should we do next? Actually, let's uh, let's um, let's add a user. Okay. So, I am using HTTP Basic Auth, and I believe if we go into Etsy Origin Master, uh, this is where the HT password file is. Okay. So, what I want to do is I want to add a user. So, I'm going to type in HT password. Uh, dash B Etsy um, origin was it and then master HT password and I'm going to call this G Shipley and I'm going to use my open shift as my password so now I should be able to log into this thing so let's type OC login username is G Shipley password is open shift boom look at that awesome we now have open shift 1 4 installed but we're not done um, let's actually uh, get our IP address again and get our DNS working. So our IP address, man, I can't read that. Let's let's do it this way. Oh gosh, we set up too many Docker virtual interfaces. It's one nine two ninety three. Okay. So I'm gonna open up Firefox here, and I am just going to find out my IP address. What is my IP address? And we'll just click one of these links here, and of course that's a spam one. Oh, great. Let's uh, let's try this one. My IP address is nine nine six nine two two one nine nine, and I am uh, yep, this is right. I am on ATTU verse in North Carolina. Okay, so I'm going to go to my domain register, and I use Gandhi uh, for that. Gandhi.net, but I'll show you my zone file let me log in here oh gosh I don't remember my uh, username and password so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna pause just a second and uh, figure that out okay I figured out my username and password it, it's not a normal username it's like GS771 it's a bunch of numbers that they assign okay so I have one domain here techdope.io okay so I'm gonna click on this and uh, actually I should have probably clicked on zones I'm just trying to show you my uh, my zone file let's see let's look at this one okay so here's my zone file so I have three a records and then a CNAME wildcard record Okay, this is just Gandhi by default. Ignore that. So I have console set up as an A record to, to my IP address that this thing gave me. Okay. I then set apps.console as an A record to that. And then for the applications as I deploy them to actually be uh, publicly available, I need a wildcard DNS. So I have a star, a CNAME record that points to app.console apps.console.techdope.io uh, points to my public IP address. I hope that makes sense. Okay, that's how I set up my, my zone file. Now, I want to show you uh, what to do on your router. Okay, so this is my uh, home router here. Oops, not 161, it's dot one. Unable to connect by. There we go. So let me log into my home router here. 
And I am using an ASUS router, so this is going to be different depending on your router, but you basically want to do like a, uh, a port forwarding type situation. Um, so if I go to WAN on mine, I have a virtual server port forwarding tab, and I have console.techdope.io. All of these ports go into 139. Um, but that is not my IP address, um, so I would just I need to change that to my internal IP address, which we determined was um, where is it again? Man, I lose it on this stuff. Let's just grab this thing. It's dot uh, ninety three. Okay, so let me go back into this, and I'm just going to call this console dot tech dope. IO and we need to do port 8443 and we want to send that to 192.168.0. Dot and of course I forgot it again. It's uh, 93. And local port is 8443. So I'm going to add that and it's going to say you can't because it's already in the list. So let me remove that one and then add it. And I'm just going to do this um, for the other ones as well. And I want to do 443, and I'm going to use the same IP address, 192.168.0.93. We want to do 443, and I'm going to remove what I had in there and then add it. And uh, we'll just do HTTP port 80, same 192.168.0.93 port 80. Remove the one I have in there and then add it. So I'm going to click on apply. This is going to reset my router. All right, so now if we go back, I should have everything up and running. I've created an account. I set up my DNS zone file. I uh, did a port forwarding on my internal router. So here's the big reveal. Let's hope this works. Let's go to HTTPS console.techdope.io port 8443 connection's not secure we expected that because it's a self-signed search let me confirm that Ooh, lovely g shipley password open shift look at that ladies and gentlemen from start to finish in under 30 minutes a full open shift origin 1.4 latest and greatest I'm so excited Look at this. Boom. Let's deploy something. Ah, oh, this is awesome. All right. So, my first project. And let's just take a look at some of the things in 1.4. Ooh, look at this. We now have groupings based on runtime. I like it. I like it a lot. Let's deploy an image from Docker Hub first. Let's do our famous uh, Kubernetes guestbook app. Yep, let's deploy this sucker. So that's downloading the Kubernetes guestbook app from Docker Hub and it's deploying it. Look at that, it's done. It's done. Let me create a route. And now look, I have a public URL for the guestbook application that works on the internet. Look at that, you can start coding in real time now. Let's, let's deploy something else because this is just too good. Let's actually go back to our projects and look at our new project overview screen. Let me add another one. Second project. Click on create and let's do a PHP app this time. Ooh, look at this. This is fancy. Like it's uh, nice and organized. What version? 7.0? Yes, sir. -y. I do want to do 7.0. My PHP app. Let me get a. Let's see what I got. Do I got any repos in here? GitHub.com. G Shipley. Let me find a PHP repository here. Uh, sure. Let's try this one. Let's build this mug. Let's watch it. View log. What's it doing? Is it downloading? Do I need to refresh? Expand log? Ooh, look at that. 
I expanded the log. That's new. So it's installing source. It's doing the source to image. It's pushing those layers. I like the. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, let's go back to our overview here. So n look at this. We now have a new project organization. Um, so you can filter. Mm -hmm. Look at this little icon here. We can now do membership management. I, I'm sorry, but um, I do get pretty excited about this stuff. So here's our second project, our PHP app. It's up and running. Grant is pretty lame. Yep, I am. All right. Um, so lots of new stuff in 1.4. I'm excited about the project overview page, the permissions system, so you can actually work with your uh, colleagues on specific projects. I'm also excited about the secrets management so if I wanted to create a secret um, for like a uh, private git repository I can do that lots of great things but I, you know that's out of scope of this video I'll probably record another one pretty soon um, but there it is ladies and gentlemen that is OpenShift Origin 1.4 start to finish from scratch going from nothing to installing an OS to getting the um, project installed and then all the way out to deploying something from the Docker Hub as well as deploying uh, something from my GitHub repo using the OpenShift Source to Image project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about uh, OpenShift. You can catch us on IRC. We're on Freenode in the Pound OpenShift channel. Hop in there and ask us some questions and let us know what you think. Thanks everybody. See ya.